Hey squad, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mike and on today's episode, we are going to be continuing our nervous system series with an in-depth look at the parasympathetic nervous system. Last week, we dove into the body's fight or flight response known as the sympathetic nervous system. So if you missed that video, click the eye above my head right here to check it out. With that said, let's dive in and get started. In contrast to the sympathetic nervous system's gas pedal-like response to the outside environment, the parasympathetic nervous system is designed to slow the body back down, acting as the body's brake pedal. Before we continue, make sure to answer that question of the day in the comments down below, which EMS respiratory drug is a anticholinergic? The origins of the parasympathetic nervous system include the 12 pairs of cranial nerves located mostly in the brainstem, as well as three spinal nerves in the sacral spine. These vertebrae S2 through S4 are commonly referred to as the pelvic splanchnik nerves. When these nerves are stimulated, they increase digestive secretions, reduce heartbeat, and prepare the body for sexual encounters. Among other things, later mentioned in this video. You may have heard this system called the rest and digest, or my favorite, the feed and breed systems. As I mentioned last week, EMS providers need to be aware of the drugs they are giving amid your patient's symptoms. Just as we give epinephrine to stimulate the sympathetic nervous system, we also have the ability to give drugs like atropine to inhibit the effects of the sympathetic nervous system. The parasympathetic nervous system utilizes the neurotransmitter acetylcholine to control much of the feed or breed response. We used that old example of meeting the bear in the woods last week while talking about our fight or flight response. Now let's expand on that. The bear was chasing you across the river and said, ooh, look, salmon, dinner, and just stopped chasing you. Your body though is still dumping epinephrine and norepinephrine through your system. It is now the responsibility of your body's brake pedal, the parasympathetic nervous system, to slow everything back down to normal. Thus, the acetylcholine on the terminal ends of the neurons begin to block those sympathetic signals. In return, blood is redirected from the essential organs like the heart and lungs and brain to refeed the skin and intestinal tract, thus allowing skin to become pink and warm, and for digestion to begin again. Pupils constrict, reducing the light available to see. Heart rate decreases to reduce the amount of circulating blood volume. Blood pressure decreases due to vasodilation as there is no further need for increased cardiac output. Respiratory rate decreases, reducing the need for more oxygen into the body. Bronchial tubes constrict as no increased amount of oxygen is required to reach the alveoli beds. Sweat glands decrease production to regulate body temperature back to normal. The major muscle groups become relaxed as there is no further need to provide intense and effective bodily movements. Salivary glands increase production to help with food breakdown. The bladder reduces in size and increases the voluntary voiding urinary pressure. And lastly, blood flow and stimulation of the reproductive organs will also increase at this time. The last item I wanted to touch on is the direct stimulation of the 10th cranial nerve, the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is the longest of the cranial nerves reaching well into your abdomen. At all times, there are electrical impulses traveling to and from the brain over this specific nerve. However, at times it can become overstimulated and cause a major parasympathetic response. Have you ever heard of an athlete that flexed their muscles too long and passed out cold in the gym? Oh wow. What the fuck? How gross is that? Why do you have so much veins? Something wrong with them. <gasps> or how about an elderly person going to the bathroom and has a sinkful episode on the toilet? These are both instances of direct vagus nerve overstimulation called a vasovagal response. When the vagus nerve is overstimulated, blood pressure plummets, heart rate also plummets, thus leading directly to syncope, 
common referred to as a loss of consciousness. You may also feel dizziness, nausea, blurred vision, and skin changes like sweaty palms and paleness. Things like standing too long, intense emotions like fear, extended ex exercise, high heat conditions, dehydration, bowel movements, and urination all can produce this response. So guys, make sure to join us next week when we finish our in-depth look at the nervous system with a deep dive into my favorite, Neurogenic Shock. In the meantime, stay safe out there, and I'll see you guys in the next video.